Hey friends, Dave here. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, using dynamic segments and content to personalize your emails. And, and so a simple way to think about this would be, let's say you, it's really all about digging into the data, right? And so let's say you jump into your data and you start to look at things like uh, email reports to see who the least engaged people are, right? So if you know who those least engaged people are, you can use that data and let that be one of the, the things that creates a dynamic segment of contacts for you. And it says, these are my least engaged people. And so that updates automatically over time. And to that group, maybe you use that to indicate that, like, hey, these people are people that aren't so engaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to send to them multiple times a week because that's likely going to force them to unsubscribe. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to email to those people once a month, right? So I'm going to keep them engaged a little bit in terms of just sending to them so they see and keep my business there, but I'm not gonna go uh, treat them as if I would a really engaged person where I'm gonna send to them multiple times, right? And so now you're not emailing them too much. So that's one way that you could think about using a dynamic segment. Now, if they end up engaging, then you can move those people out of that bucket into a more engaged bucket, which then you can start to send to them more frequently. Because again, people are on different timelines on when they wanna actually do business with you. And so this is a good way to start to think about that. Now, another thing that you can think about is, you know, you can use all sorts of different dynamic segments based on certain criteria. And so like, let's say you're in e-commerce, you could, you know, and you're connected to, let's say Shopify, you could start to take that information and create dynamic segments based on actions taken on Shopify, for example. And so this is another way that you can start to create these lists of people dynamically that allow you to reach them with specific messaging. Now, another thing to think about here is also using some of the data that you have to create dynamic content within your emails. And so simple way to think about this would be like a pet supply store, right? You have people that have cats, you have people that have dogs. You can imagine if you're writing an email about a sale, you can use dynamic content within that email so that the people that own cats get pictures of cats and the people that have dogs get pictures of dogs, right? So you can start to see how something like that would be valuable in terms of having those emails feel more personalized when you send those to people. Now, as you start to get even more advanced, it means taking the data that's available to you and not only the email platform, but it's website behavior, it's purchase history, it's all of that stuff that allows you to start making better decisions on what to send to individual contacts next, right? And so this could mean even figuring out what most people buy after the purchase of a particular product. Now, look, Many people don't do this simply because it's, it's, it's a lot of time involved to dig through all that data. Uh, and it's complex as you start to have more customers and as you start to have more products with which you sell. But what's exciting is that particularly right now, this is really more prevalent in the e-commerce industry, but you can really get to this level of using artificial intelligence, predictive analytics and automation together um, to help you actually ease the burden of having to do this manually. And uh, in the next video, I'll talk about that. But uh, to me, someone who's been in this industry for a while, this is where things get really exciting. So I can't wait to share more with you. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye, friends.